What's up guys, Mark back in the house with yet another Sony a6300 video. What I want to do is I just want to kind of go over some of the things about the camera that I think that would be beneficial to those of you out there that are thinking about buying it and want to add it to your lineup. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I'm not going to talk about. First thing that I'm not going to talk about in this video is the menu system. For the love of God, folks, it's been pretty much the exact same menu system for like the last three years now. The longer you play with it, the more you get used to it. It's just like anything else. It's not as bad as everyone out there makes it out to be. It's pretty functional. It does what it needs to do. Let's just go ahead and skip railing on that damn menu system. Second thing I'm not gonna talk about in this video is the fucking battery life. I have heard so many people on so many different channels in so many different videos talking about the battery life. Just buy extra batteries. So many people talk about it, but no one offers any solutions. They just wanna criticize, I want a bigger battery, I want a bigger battery, I want as much shit as I can possibly imagine crammed into this one tiny microscopic camera body and I want them to do it all for under $500. Not to mention they're cheap as fuck. The third thing that I'm not going to talk about in this video is the touch screen or the lack thereof. I think that if you genuinely want that for selfie blogging, vlogging purposes, just get a Sony A5100. It's got the exact same innards as the A6000 and it also has a selfie screen. I think it's a, an amazing investment, especially for like, what is it, $300 right now? I'll put a link to it down in the description so you can buy that shit and support the channel. Word. The fourth and final thing that I am not going to be talking about in this particular video is that wonky little record button. Yes, it still sucks. Yes, it's still in a weird place and we're not gonna talk about it. Okay, so let us go ahead and move on to the things that I do not like about this camera. And there are several. Number one, no headphone jack. Now, maybe it's just me. Perhaps I'm the odd man out here. But I think that if you are going to include audio style functions into the camera, don't do it half-assed. If you're going to have a mic jack, it is only proper that you put in a headphone jack. What's the point in putting audio into a system that you cannot actively monitor? It just seems like good logical sense to me. If you're gonna have audio in, we need a way to get audio out. So I'm talking to you, Sony. If you're listening, if you watch any of these videos, in the next iteration of this camera, put in a headphone jack or get rid of the mic jack. Actually, no, don't scratch that. I like the mic jack entirely too much, but definitely put in a headphone jack. The second thing that I do not like about this camera is the fact that the screen dims in 4K mode. Yes, it may be a bit nitpicky, but the fact of the matter is that if you're gonna be but the fact of the matter is, is that if you're going to be recording in 4K, there are going to be some situations where you're going to want to do that kind of stuff in bright light, including the sun. I just hope that the technology advances to such an extent within the next two years that when the next iteration of the Sony A6 whatever comes out, that it will in fact not do that. It's just... It's a little pet peeve of mine. Third thing I don't like about this camera is the fact that the rolling shutter is pretty horrendous. So as long as you're not going to be recording any fast moving cars, any thing that's, I mean, really, really fast, you shouldn't have a problem. If you're going to stabilize this camera, which you should, if you plan on moving a whole lot, or if you know your subjects are going to be moving a lot, plan the shot out a little bit better. The rolling shutter is going to just be bad like really bad. The rolling shutter is always gonna be an issue. I, I talked about that in my uh, rolling shutter test uh, video. Uh, if you wanna see that, I'll leave a link to it down in the description box below, or I'll put it right up here in the corner so that you can check that out. The rolling shutter is bad enough that you're not going to want, uh, in at least in video mode, to record any fast moving subjects where you can get that literally, it's a 20 degree shift in the image. The fourth thing that I do not like about this particular camera is the fact that the codec is an 8-bit codec. The Panasonic GH4 has a 10-bit codec. 10-bit would have been so nice in this camera. I mean, so, so nice. The fifth thing that I do not like about this camera is still that goddamn SD card slot location. Why the fuck they put it right there underneath the camera, right beside the battery where it is quite literally the most awkward place in the world to try and get an SD card out of? You talk about a pet peeve of mine, that pisses me off so bad, I could go choke out a Sony exec. The sixth thing that I do not like about this camera is the fact that I am unable 
to remap the record button, it doesn't seem like it would make much logical sense for them not to allow that to happen, but that's exactly what they've done. They've made an executive decision, and up to this point, no amount of kicking and screaming has managed to change their minds, so you're fucked and so am I. The seventh thing that I don't like about this camera is that the app integration is not seamless. That is the biggest cluster of a pairing of two devices I have ever seen in my life. It's so convoluted, it doesn't even register for the most, I mean, I literally spent 30 solid minutes getting my camera and my phone paired together and it was just brutal, absolutely brutal. That thing should burn in hell. And last but not least, the thing that I do not like about this camera is the absolutely frustrating mode of data input that you have to use on this camera without a touch screen. Mind you, you have to roll and click and scroll and click and up, up, up and down, down, down and input it one character at a time. Swear to God, putting any sort of information into, uh, into this camera, it just makes me want to drink bleach. Now that I've got all my bitching out of the way, let's talk about the things that I do like about this camera. The first thing that I absolutely love about this camera is the build quality. They have taken a basically fully consumer grade camera and turned it into an absolute beast of a prosumer camera. The build quality is just unbelievable. Holy shit, they're gonna compare it to their A6000 and it's just gonna blow their panties off. It is like night and day between that plastic body and that nice magnesium alloy body. I mean, the thing is just crazy. So that, my friends, is a massive plus. Uh, that is a massive upgrade on this camera and I couldn't be more pleased. The next thing that I love about this camera is the improved hot shoe functionality and third-party flash compatibility. The Sony A6000 just had one hell of a time uh, getting certain flash just to work in their hot shoe. It was brutal. There's not been a flash that I have used or played around with that I've not been able to immediately just throw it in the hot shoe and it works. Bam! It's been on point. The next thing I absolutely love about this camera is the improved EVF. This thing is leaps and bounds better than the EVF on the Sony A6000. I love this EVF. It is fast. It is bright. It is responsive. You know, for fuck's sake, man, it's, a, it's an electronic viewfinder. It's not going to be an optical viewfinder. If you want an optical viewfinder because you like the certain subtleties of the human eye and its interaction with light unprocessed, get a fucking DSLR. What are you griping about? The EVF is amazing. And for those of you that aren't constantly doing fast tracking shots and all that kind of stuff, you're going to love this EVF too. The next thing I absolutely love about this camera is the 4K and the S-Log 2 and 3. The first thing, obviously, you know, the 4K is just amazing. You basically get quadruple the uh, image quality when you're recording video. That's kind of a no-brainer. Everyone's been talking about that. But the other thing that uh, very few people are talking about is the fact that you've got a lower native ISO on the A6300 than you do the Sony A7S Mark II. On the Sony A7S Mark II, you've got a native ISO of 1600 ISO when recording in S-Log. On the A6300, you've got a native ISO of 800. That means you're going to have less noise in the shadow areas. That is huge. Absolutely huge. The video functions that they've included with this camera for one third the price of the Sony A7S II, boom. I mean, boom. Another thing we ought to talk about here is that the expanded dynamic range in the Sony A6300 is amazing. We're literally talking about, I've seen several different tests out here, I'm going to shoot somewhere in the middle, that the actual stops of dynamic range you're going to be able to pull out of this camera is roughly 11 stops. The Sony a7S II, a camera that is three times the price, only pulls 12 stops of dynamic range. Let me say that again, 11 stops of dynamic range. 11 stops. Most professional cinema cameras only get between 10 and 13 stops. A $1,000 camera that can damn near fit in your pocket has 11 stops of dynamic range. It's definitely not as good as a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And you wanna talk about bad battery life, 
go play with that one. So the thing you want to keep in mind here is that you're going to be able to see further into the highlights and further into the shadows, more so than just about any other camera in this price range. The next thing I love about this camera is the mic jack. I love the fact that I don't have to record to a secondary audio source if I don't want to. I've got the Rodelink uh, lavalier microphone right here, and I've got the Rodelink transmitter sitting right up above the camera, plugged directly into this Sony A6300, uh, and it just works. It sounds really good. Just be sure that you turn down the internal recording volume in the camera. It's just garbage. It's not that good. I mean, it's okay, but it's really not okay. The next thing I love about this camera is the improved app functionality. You can now finally record video and have video live stream from your camera directly to your phone. I released a video on that yesterday. I will put the link to that video down in the description box below or I will put it up here in the cards section. So being able to actually live stream the video from the camera to your phone. Oh my god. It's so good. I'm using it right now. I absolutely love this shit. I, I mean it is that good. You will get a little bit of lag but overall it is very, very functional. So the last thing that I like about this camera is the price. For $1,000, I can honestly say that this is probably one of the best cameras on the market right here, right now. Uh, it has everything that most people, and I'm talking about a massive swath of people. Now, there's gonna be people on the extreme outer edges, people that just like to do the bare minimum, and then people who like to do a whole, whole lot of finagling. Uh, but this camera, fills that massive gap that basically captures everyone that's sitting there right in the middle. And when you start taking all that different stuff and you start applying it to your workflow and your everyday life and the way you like to work, when you start seeing how it can improve or enrich or uh, make easier, you are going to absolutely gawk at the price. You're just going to be like, a thousand dollars? Bullshit, man. That thing is amazing for a thousand dollars. It damn near can change the oil in my car for a thousand dollars. I mean, it does a lot of stuff for such a low price point. I would easily have paid probably twice this, but only if it had a full frame. So the ultimate question at this point is, would I recommend the Sony a6300? And <laughs> that's an easy, easy answer. Yes, absolutely. But you knew there had to be a but. If you're primarily a steals person who just on occasionally does video uh, and you occasionally do video only in 1080p, then no, don't upgrade. It's not worth it. As far as I can tell, and I've done several tests, the image quality between the Sony a6000 and the a6300 are damn near identical as far as the stills are concerned. But that is only in JPEG mode. Up to this point, none of the apps that I've used have gotten an update yet that can actually process the raw files in the Sony a6300. So without actually having a side-by-side -side raw test between the two cameras, I can't honestly say if I think that the raw image quality on the a6300 genuinely is better than the raw quality on the a6000. If it is in fact learned that the raw quality is better on the a6300, if the raw image processing is in fact that much better then and only then could I recommend a upgrade to the a6300 over the a6000. Do I think that the difference would be very significant? No, no I really don't. Um, but I do think that with the expanded dynamic range and stills mode of uh, what is it up to 14 stops of dynamic range, I mean you're starting to rival some of the biggest names in the camera business right now. This camera is essentially an A7R Mark II with the dynamic range of almost an A7S Mark II all crammed into a compact tiny little A6000 body with all that beautiful magnesium alloy and weather sealing. So I hope this video helps some of you guys out there make a better decision, learn more about this camera. I do believe that it's gonna be an extremely valuable tool. It's sold out everywhere and for good reason. This thing is amazing. Uh, so if you guys have any questions that I have not been able to answer thus far, please leave those down in the comment section below. If you all have been tuned into my channel for any length of time, I've been working my ass off trying to get as many questions answered one right after another in the last week on this channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up, share the video on the internet with your friends and family on the social medias of the world. And also subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. At any rate, guys, thanks again for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I will see you guys again on the next one. Gotta drink a, gotta drink more coffee after that one.